So we've seen how the uh, matching model operates under different assumption on uh, the production function and the wage function. We've, we've seen how the model responds to various types of shocks. We've seen the different types of unemployment that can be captured by, uh, by matching models, uh, frictional unemployment, rational unemployment, and all these kind of things. Uh, now, in the last uh, few lectures of the semester, I want to turn to more um, normative questions as opposed to positive questions. So, positive questions in science or in economics are questions that are related to just describing the facts, describing what's going on in the real world and trying to predict what would happen in the real world. Normative questions are questions that have to do with um, policy, you know, what the government should do, how policies should be um, developed. This is something that you have to take a stand on the objective of the government or the objectives that society is trying to uh, pursue and from there try to design um, policies that can reach this objective. So now we're going to move to that world of normative applications, trying to think about policy and what the government should do, not just what is. Um, so um, to do that, something that's critical in our model is to try to figure um, what is the efficient level of unemployment. Uh, so what is the efficient level of unemployment? In, uh, so by definition, efficient means that it's a level of unemployment that's going to um, maximize the measure of social welfare that we use. So efficiency means that social welfare, the welfare of the entire economy is, uh, is maximized. So why do we care? Why do we need to know what is efficient unemployment? What do we care about that? Um, so th there, are two, there are two reasons. So one is uh, a, th a theoretical reason, and we will see in the, in the rest of the semester when we study policies, it turns out that this efficient unemployment level or rate is a key target for many optimal policies. So when you think about policies, when you think about, say, um, government spending or hiring by the government or unemployment insurance, or even if you thought about monetary policy, what the Fed does, uh, and you try to design the best policies that can be for the government, for the Fed, and so on, very often when you do that, you realize that you need to know what is that efficient level of unemployment. Like the efficient level of unemployment so the level of unemployment that maximizes welfare is a target that's going to show up in many of these policy equations. So from a, an academic perspective, if, we, if you're interested in designing this type of policies, it's key to know what is the efficient uh, unemployment rate. So that's kind of a, from an academic side. But from a practical side, as well, it's very important to know what is the efficient unemployment rate. It's something that governments uh, really need when uh, they conduct uh, policy. And in fact, um, so if you take the US, for instance, the government uh, has a mandate that it must do whatever it can to achieve what is called full employment. Uh, so this is stated in law. There is a, a law that's called the Humphrey Hawkins Full Employment Act of 1978 that said that the government through fiscal policy and the Fed through monetary policy they have to work together to achieve this idea of full employment. Now of course uh, you understand that full employment doesn't mean zero unemployment. We know that reaching zero unemployment due to the uh, structure of the labor market due to the flows that are constant you know, continuously sending people into unemployment, reaching zero unemployment is not feasible. So when the lawmakers talked about full employment, they didn't mean zero unemployment, because that's something that's physically not possible. So what they meant, we can only gather, is some level of unemployment that's desirable, you know, some ideal level of unemployment, something that's not too high, uh, so that's low enough, but that remains uh, feasible. And so the only interpretation we can give to that notion of 
full employment is efficient unemployment because efficient unemployment is some level of unemployment that's feasible and that's the most desirable from a, a society's perspective. So if you're working in a Fed or if you're working for the government, for the treasury, um, you need to have an idea of what is that efficient level of unemployment because by law this is what you should be targeting. Okay, So that's why we're going to uh, spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out using theory, you know, how that efficient unemployment rate looks like, and then trying to use some empirical evidence uh, to then like try to get a sense, say, in the US, of what that efficient unemployment rate uh, may be.